wake up every single day. I am who I say I am. I get what I get because I stay in beast mode. I've been in bondage for so long, I had to break out. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to get this work today. 740 times two. Let's get it. that I've had, uh, not, I guess it, it changed into physically, but just mentally. You know, you got, just at a point in my career where everybody wants something, like, nonstop. Emails, phone calls, Instagram, Facebook, everybody wants something, everybody wants a part, everybody wants a piece, and it's just, it's overwhelming, you know, so really over the past, I'd say 10 days, I've been in the gym, I've been working out, but I'm just saying like overall, it's been really trialing. I'm trying to balance everything, you know, but I'll tell you one thing that really uh, helped me have a different perspective is watching um, The Last Dance on Netflix with uh, Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls organization. Uh, you know, and Jordan was like the epitome of, of greatness, like in all aspects. And then just just seeing his drive. And I like like so listen to a podcast of some guys that listen to Eric Thomas now. Um, they were he, he he picked out a certain particular time where you know when it talked about championships, yeah, he was emotional. When it talked about his dad, he was emotional. But when it talked about his drive and what, his why, I mean, he got extremely emotional. And it takes, I, I can't tell you what it takes to get there because I'm still trying to get there. But for a person to have a drive like that to where, you know, you have the drive that, that to get to that drive is just, man, it, it takes, I can't even say digging deep because it's, it's past that. Like, I, and I think it's when Eric Thomas was talking about like, so when, whenever your talent and your will clash and they, and they, they um, you know, they, they glue together or however you want to put it, the chemistry's there where they both clash and you're functioning with not only talent, but your will, your drive, um, something magical happens there. And that's, that's when a person does something that people will remember for a hundred years from now. I know by what Jordan has done, Michael Jordan has done, he will be remembered 100 years from now. Oh, yeah. Heck, it's already, it's already what, almost 20 years since he's retired, and um, he's still the topic of, of, of different headlines right now. Like, his shoes are as hot as they've ever been. 
Um, so I see, a, you know, 80 years from now, I don't, I probably won't be here, but I know my kids' kids will probably be wearing Jordans. I'm just saying, I don't know what the shoes are going to be out there. It might be the Marty McFly Sixes. I don't know, but I'm just saying, like, he left such a legacy behind, and it's because of the hard work that he put in. I'm trying to find that. Yes, people say, man, you are on top of your game. You are uh, the greatest as far as bench-wise, but I don't see it. I don't see it yet. That's not that's not where I want my pinnacle to be. My pinnacle is going to be once I surpass 800 pounds and go to the next level in life, whatever that's going to be, and conquer that. That's when I'll say I've, I've achieved greatness because I didn't just achieve it in one area. I achieved it in another area also. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's just how I feel about it. Makes sense. This jersey's gonna be up. So go to irregularstrength.com and get this customized jersey because it's a limited edition. We're not gonna come out with this jersey ever again. So irregularstrength.com, get this jersey. Comes in this color and black and camo. So join the team. Join the team. Any new news on 800? It's coming. You gotta polish up on the small things. That's where I'm at right now. I wake up every single day. I am who I say I am. I get what I get because I stay in beast mode. 
to it. Eric Thomas, baby. Ready? in the video because oh man I can see it knotting up right now oh it's throbbing and it's looking like it's gonna be one of them cartoon knots oh man it's throbbing yeah it's gonna be bad you're gonna oh, feel man. it for a while you're gonna you're gonna feel it for a week oh my gosh that's look, look that's the advantage i mean that's what the cameraman has to do you got to be able to maneuver your way around the gym you know you got to be able to sway without tearing these knees up because look at my knees that was the last one. That was on a trailer hitch. Man. And I just, I just re, I just reopened the wound today. Uh, coming in here, I hit something. Maybe I hit that. So, you gotta be careful. Might need a minute. simple as this is like he said his wife got on to him about washing clothes she was like look I don't want you to wash clothes no more because when you wash clothes our clothes my clothes and your clothes smell different and he's like what do you mean she's like I don't want you touching the laundry no more because every time you wash clothes you make our clothes smell different. They don't smell like they like, like they smell whenever I whenever I wash them. And he like he took to offense to that. He, he took offense to that. Like I wash clothes just like you. And he's like I'm washing clothes for you. And she's like I don't want you to touch the clothes no more. Don't touch them. And he was like, some people their boss is telling them like, look, you just average. You just average. And. Y'all ain't doing nothing about it. Y'all ain't rising to the occasion. He said he took offense to that, so he would come home early from the podcast and, and, and whatever, the, their company, just to see his wife wash clothes and watch the process because he had to rise to the occasion. Something is, I know it sounds crazy just about like washing clothes, something as minute as that, but like that's what the difference is about like raising the level of excellence like being great like being good like his wife pretty much called him like an average like you're average you're washing clothes ain't like mine i do it great but you're doing average and he can't accept average because eric thomas is one of the greatest motivational speakers in the world he is the greatest motivational speaker in the world and he's not average he's not going to accept average and he said some people go to work and their boss will tell them they're average and they don't do nothing about it they don't rise to the occasion because they don't want to be great some of you guys just check in and check out, not wanting to be great. Y'all just, you're okay with being average. You're okay with just coming through the gym, uh, uh, just being trivial and just going through the motions. I'm gonna do a few sets of this, I'm gonna do a few sets of that and wonder why uh, you're not getting stronger, wonder why it's not carrying over to other, wonder why it is carrying over to other parts of your life because you're treating your life the same way you treat the gym. You just go into the gym and you just go through the motions and not really have no structure, no focus, and you get in and, and, and nothing's changing. Just so be in your life, like, you just go through the motions, you go to work, you check in, you check out, and nothing changes. You're not trying to better yourself. You're not trying to be different. You're not trying to uh, 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 be above average. And, and that's just the whole point of, of me posting this stuff on YouTube. It's like, I want people to understand, like, we have the opportunity to be great. We have the opportunity. We live in America where we can do whatever we want to do, but we choose to be average. It's crazy. That's once, and I, I thought the same way. I lived the same way until something switched. And the saying, like, you only live once, like, yeah, that's right, you only live once. So you need to follow up on every single opportunity you get in life. And I mean, don't just come at it. 
uh, as my coach would say, like a days ago, tiptoeing through the tulips. Like, come in like like that hum like that yellow boy, like the Hummer on Bad Boys Three, where you where you smashing stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You getting after it. Getting it. We about to get after it. Let's go. Get it. You know what time it is? It was sloppy, but we'll take it. Man. You know they do just double corrals over right now? Yeah. Oh man, that was rough. You have to be able to adjust. But not only that, there's there's you know, there's other things to take into consideration. And when it's something as such as like a pad when it comes to somebody my size, it hasn't necessarily been that uh, much of a problem at this moment until, not at this moment, but in the past, until now where we're upwards towards, you know, again, we're in our chartered waters and we're at heights that, that nobody has ever been. So everything has to be on cue, everything. So even as such as my foot placement, if one foot is front of the other, in front of the other, something that is like really no way to to be able to gauge whenever you set up, and because you can't look back down and look at your feet, you know what I mean? Like just small stuff like that. But uh, I know I, I, I pretty much uh, tore every, not in a bad way, like, uh, but I tore down every muscle in my body through that set. Not in my body, but in my chest. Yeah. Like, I, I know I'm going to be weak for a few days. <laughs> like, I'm going to be feeling this for a few days. Um, just because I can feel 
the little um, the little tears in my muscles every time I do a lift like that. It, it's crazy. You would, I mean, but that's part of the muscle building process is to tear your muscles down to re rebuild them back up. But I can literally feel my muscles like pulling apart. It's crazy. It's weird. Really weird. Like little micro tears. Look, look, I'm gonna show you, look. Watch my body lean, watch. Watch my body lean. Look, on the second rep. Watch my body lean, watch. See it, see it twisting? Mm -hmm. See my body twisting? So, how, why am I, why is my body twisting like that? Why am I twisting at the bottom of the rep? Once we figure it out, we focus in on that. And you know, I think too, is I really think that this foot has a big problem with it. My right foot is further back than my left foot is. So whenever that initial drive is gonna twerk and twist my body. It's how deep we get, we go play by play. We try to figure this out, man. It's so a lot of work goes in behind this. That's right. Today's a bad day. I'm at work. Today's a bad day. 
Um, so I'm gonna make it my point to piss everybody else off or make everybody else's day bad. Like, for what that does to your mind, your body, your soul, it's just, it's not healthy for you. But if you say, okay, today started off bad, but I'm gonna finish strong and I'm gonna learn something and I'm gonna figure out a way around how I feel and what I'm going through today, in that process is how you set out on the road to greatness. And we talk about greatness video after video after video because, like, I don't care who you are, what level you're at, everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to do something great in life. So that's the motto. At the end of the day, everything is about leading up to greatness. Everything. Being a great dad, being a great husband, being a great uh, uh, employee, being a great employer, being a great mentor, just being a great person overall. Like, yeah. Helping people and, and just inspiring other people. Don't be just, I, it, it bothers me so much to see people that are just, they're at their jobs and they're just miserable and, and the customer service is horrible because they're just, they're just in a funky mood and it's just like, have you ever been somewhere and had horrible customer service and like because of that situation put you in a bad mood? Yeah. You know what I mean? So like. You remember when we went down to uh, Alabama? Oh yeah, just that whole situation like, and like when you're negative and just, you know, when you got a bad attitude like that, man, that, that just, that, it just. It's contagious. It's more than contagious. It just sets a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Just, it's easier to, to be polite, be nice, be helpful than it is to be negative all the time. Yeah. Because nobody wants anything to do with you when you're negative like that. I promise you that. And you being negative and just having a horrible attitude, attitude all the good things will pass you up. Yeah. And then you wonder why you're in that situation because you're so negative all the time that the good stuff will pass you up. The good people will pass you up. Blessing. Triceps are on fire. Oh. The wheels on the bus go round and round. Why you look at the plate like that? Uh... Yeah. I'm delirious. <laughs> that took a lot of energy out of me right yeah. there. You want some of these, cameraman? I still got it in. You want some of these, cameraman? No. Nah. I broke my knee. You broke your knee? <laughs> Is that why you're standing like that? Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You're standing like uh, you're on the injured list on the sidelines. Man, I am. So the difference with bands, compared to weight, especially when you're doing the pauses, is you're forcing your muscles to recruit, you're forcing them to activate. So those pauses, is, like right now, my back feels like it's cramping. And this resistance, I would say it's probably, maybe only, maybe only 100 pounds overall, but the constant tension is the, is the key, is the key thing. So it's constant. So even whenever you are, you're, uh, you're, you're um, releasing the weight from the pulse, it's still pulling. So you have to fight it the whole time. But me, I can feel, it's crazy, because I can feel every single muscle activated. You know what I mean? Do I have a try? You want to try this real quick? Let's try this. 
coming half field. So you're gonna go, you're gonna do a three second pause at the top. I did six, but you're gonna do three. Two, three, all right. One, two, three. One, two, three. Make sure you're squeezing the top too. One, two, three. Two more. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Right, right. That's wicked, ain't it? <laughs> That's almost better than the weight, isn't it? Yeah. But we'll, uh, what I like to do, I'll warm up, then I'll throw some weight on there just to get the, the, that, that load on there. Yeah, it really does. Feel but it, I feel like now still. Oh, yeah, you're going to feel it for You'll probably feel it tomorrow. Just that one set would be, guys, take care of yourself mentally. Um, it's okay to say no sometimes. You know, when you're being pulled from many different areas, whether family, work, friends, when it comes to like extra things, guys, you understand, it's, it's sometimes it's okay to say no. It's okay to, uh, uh, to take the back seat sometimes and just, you know, take care of other things that you got going on because if you're not mentally stable, that carries over to the gym and you're not going to produce like you're normally producing. Like when someone has, and I'm not saying you're crazy, I'm just saying like, like we all have mental issues. We all somewhat deal with things differently and you have to take time out for yourself. Sometimes it's good for you to get away. It's good for you to get alone. It's great for you to meditate. And like for me, like I'm a firm believer um, in Jesus. So that's what I, that, that's, that's my go-to, you know? So that's what I've been praying over the past week. Guys, I've just been mentally fatigued just from everybody. Um, and it's not a bad thing, but of course, when you're in a, a, a place of a position, a position uh, that, that a demanding position where people are always needing something from you, um, sometimes it has a wear on you, you know, and you need to make sure, again, that you're taking care of yourself first. And it's good for us to help other people, but sometimes that can get overwhelming and people take that for granted too. So people will use you and use you and use you and use you and never think about, you know, your state of being, your well-being. So sometimes you have to you have to think about those things and, and, and put you and your uh, your state first, you know, uh, as far as mentally. You can't because, pour out of an empty vessel. No, yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't pour out of an empty vessel. Like you, you have to, uh, did you say vessel? Vessel. I thought you said, well, there's a, there's a thing that they call, it's called a facet, I think. Oh, okay. Like, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Go ahead. The same thing as like wine skins, right? But anyway, you can't pour out of an empty jug. You get it? Um, so, guys, you need to get alone, get some time alone, or whether it's you and your significant other, or you and your kids, or you and a couple of buddies, and go take a break, man. Go to the lake, go to the beach, go. If you don't got the money to do that, heck, heck, go out to eat by yourself and, I don't know go read a book go drink some coffee and read a book or something but sometimes it's okay to like step back so for me what I did was um, I got off social media for a couple days and just like took a step back and it was so crazy I just I just gave my kids my phone and said take it and they did whatever they wanted to do that's part answering phone calls and all of that she mimicked you oh she killed it on that video oh oh yeah yeah so like did you ever do that she killed it yeah I know so, uh, that's, that's something special right there. Oh, no. You, you just have to, uh, you have to get away sometimes, like, not necessarily get away physically, but get away mentally from whatever you got, tasks you got, because if you don't take care of this, you're not going to be successful with any of this. So, uh, I guess I'll catch you guys next week. Stay tough, stay motivated, stay ready.